This video provides an understanding of the traction system, including components that make up the system, switching protocols, and how the system functions and interaction back to the electrical control center. A core intent of this video is to support the development, training, and awareness of industry participants by engaging with them to understand their needs and how best to communicate to them. When working in the vicinity of MTM electrical overhead assets, it is important that you understand the requirements of the network operator for your safety and the safety of those around you. This includes having an understanding of all components of the overhead line equipment, their associated voltages, and the potential hazards you may face when working around them. Electrol is MTM's electrical systems control center. Electrol control all high voltage power operations on the MTM electrified system. MTM does not generate its own power and therefore relies on the external power distribution companies to supply power to the network. MTM is responsible for maintaining the supply equipment and train network overhead asset infrastructure. The incoming high voltage power supply is usually at 22,000 volts and is connected to MTM's traction substations, which convert the incoming AC supply to 1500 volts DC, which is required to run the trains throughout the network. Traction substations are located at regular intervals along the track to minimize voltage drops that could affect train performance. MTM also maintains portions of its own AC transmission system with high voltage AC feeders installed on overhead structures and in underground cables connected between substations. The transmission feeders are made up of three conductors that are normally energized at 22,000 volts AC. The substation is connected to the transmission lines at either a tee-off point or at the end of a feeder. The traction substation contains AC circuit breakers, which control and protect the flow of high voltage AC power, rectifier transformers and rectifier assemblies to convert the AC power to DC power, and DC circuit breakers to control and protect the 1500 volt DC overhead lines. The substation also contains numerous auxiliary services that enable the installation to operate safely, such as the control supply and the remote terminal unit which allows the remote operation of the substation equipment via Electrol. There are lots of different configurations of substations around the network. Some substations have outdoor switchyards. Some have indoor enclosed high voltage equipment. Substations may look physically different. However, all substations perform the same function, convert AC power to DC power for the trains and provide fault protection for the 1500 volt DC overhead wiring. The overhead system is broken up into segments called an electrical section. Each electrical section is given a unique identification number, which is related to its line section, track, and distance from Flinders Street. Each mainline electrical section is typically fed 1500 volts DC power via two circuit breakers from two substations. Both supply circuit breakers are normally closed, therefore providing two sources of electricity for trains in the section. Electrical sections are detailed on the 1500 volt DC sectionalizing diagrams. These diagrams are safety critical documents in much the same way a signaling arrangement plan is and are controlled and managed exclusively by MTM to ensure they are always accurate and exactly reflect the network as constructed. The overhead wiring system of the railway is made up of lots of different parts, all of which have a unique function. Electrical components attached to a typical overhead structure include 22,000 volt AC high voltage transmission feeders, 1500 volt DC feeders, 1500 volt contact wire and catenary wire, dropper wires to provide support to the contact wire, the spark gap and cable, and electrolysis feeders. The DC power from the substation is connected to the overhead wiring by a switch or isolator that can be used to isolate the feed from that substation to the overhead wiring. These switches or isolators can be mounted either on the substation wall, on the side of an overhead portal structure, or on a standalone structure in the rail corridor. 
The 1500 volt DC isolators must be treated as exposed live electrical apparatus, and any approach to these components must be undertaken in accordance with the required safe approach distances, or SADs. The power to operate the trains flows from the substation, through the overhead wire, to the train, and returns to the substation via the tracks. The steel overhead structures are connected to the power return rail via a spark gap. Under high voltage fault conditions, the spark gap will break down and connect the structure directly to the power rail, allowing fault current to flow, which will then cause the circuit breakers in the substation to open, automatically de-energizing the section and isolating the fault. The spark gap is an important part of the DC fault protection system in the case of overhead structure insulation failure. As a result, care must always be taken to avoid damaging the spark gap cable. If the cable is broken, a 1500 volt DC fault may not be detected by a circuit breaker, which could result in arcing and wiring system failure, leading to fire or injury to persons due to electric shock. The spark gap is needed to ensure that the overhead structure is normally electrically isolated from the rail, but provides a path should there be a fault that requires it. The normal isolation between the structure and the rail is critical to prevent corrosion of the structure foundations and metallic objects buried in the ground. The spark gap, however, is sometimes susceptible to breaking down due to overvoltages that can occur due to external sources, such as a transient fault on a nearby power distribution asset or a lightning strike. In this case, the spark gap will connect the structure to the rail when there was not a breakdown of the 1500 volt DC insulation and will cause the structure to become the same voltage as the rail. Because we have no way of remotely knowing whether a spark gap has blown or not without testing, metallic objects must never be placed against or connected to overhead structures under any circumstances. This is important to prevent the possibility of sparking or arcing between the overhead structure and the metallic object due to DC leakage current flow. The electrolysis feeder often runs along the outside of the structures and is used to mitigate the corrosive effect of stray DC current on underground metallic structures, such as gas and water pipes, and provides a safe return path to the substation. This wire must be treated in the same way you treat a live conductor. When a site-based risk assessment, conducted by a supervisor in charge, identifies that a person, equipment or mobile plant might infringe on the SADs, effective safety control measures need to be implemented prior to work commencing. Controls may include engineering controls, isolation, earthing or short-circuiting, MTM-approved barriers in line with MTM fencing and asset protection guidelines, or administrative controls, such as the use of an MTM Electrical Networks Overhead Safety Observer, or OSO. Works in the vicinity of the overhead network are governed by the Victorian Traction Industry Electrical Safety Rules, better known as the Orange Book, an industry code of practice administered by Energy Safe Victoria. To support the principles of the Orange Book, MTM have produced an electrical safety manual that defines specific procedures for accessing high voltage apparatus managed by MTM. All persons working on or around the railway traction system must comply with both of these. Access to allow works within the vicinity or on any electrical apparatus within the SADs is controlled via an access authority permit system. There are three levels of SADs for mobile plant and any unauthorized person. If works are planned to be undertaken more than 6.4 metres from an exposed conductor or piece of electrical apparatus, and the scope of works will ensure that the activities will always remain clear at a distance of more than 6.4 metres, MTM electrical networks do not need to be consulted prior to the commencement of the works. In the case of doubt, or the scope of works has the potential to encroach on the 6.4 metre limit, the MTM electrical overhead team must be contacted to determine if works can go ahead or if any additional controls need to be put in place prior to continuation of works. 
If mobile plant or people are to enter between 6.4 and 2 metres from live overhead line equipment, the site must be inspected by an MTM electrical overhead representative prior to any work taking place to determine if the overhead line needs to be isolated and an access authority is required. If the MTM electrical overhead representative determines that the works may be undertaken safely with the line remaining energised, then an overhead safety observer, OSO, is required to be on site at all times to monitor the approach to the electrical asset. The OSO is responsible for ensuring the agreed controls are maintained and must not be engaged in any other works whilst undertaking this role. Electrical networks will typically require one OSO per piece of mobile plant unless advised otherwise. If the OSO is determined by MTM Electrical Networks to not be required, but other controls can be used, they must be in place prior to any work commencing. If mobile plant or people are to work within two metres of exposed electrical apparatus, the apparatus must be isolated and earthed or short-circuited, and an access authority must be issued. Safe approach distances, important reminders. It is important that all assets are considered live unless confirmation has been provided by an authorised person that the asset has been made safe or there are controls in place to ensure safe approach. The safe approach distances are based on an exclusion zone principle. No individual, mobile plant or object is allowed to touch or encroach upon a live asset unless an access authority or other control is implemented. Where the safe approach distances cannot be maintained for the duration of the planned works, an access authority must be issued and received prior to the work commencing to allow the work to proceed safely. Failure to comply with the safe approach distance when accessing or working adjacent to high voltage apparatus may result in an electrical incident, injury or death. There are four different types of access authorities. A permit to work near, or PTWN, allows work safely up to, but not on, exposed electrical apparatus, is used mostly for works underneath or next to overhead wiring, such as tree clearing, and is not used for maintenance of the overhead wiring. Permit to work in the vicinity, or PTWV, is issued to a person not under the control of Metro, it documents safeguards and precautions that must be adhered to by the person to ensure their safety. These safeguards are often related to the maintenance of a safety barrier or an exclusion zone. Electrical apparatus does not necessarily need to be isolated and earthed or short-circuited. A PTWV does not permit access to the electrical apparatus within the SADS under any circumstances. An electrical access permit, or EAP, allows work safely on electrical apparatus. The apparatus must be isolated and earthed or short-circuited prior to issue and remain that way throughout the duration of the permit. An EAP is used mostly for the maintenance of electrical apparatus and allows the high voltage worker to make contact with exposed conductors safely. Sanction for testing is a special permit that allows removal of earths and short circuits for testing of electrical apparatus and allows energisation of circuits at higher than normal working voltages using a test source. This kind of testing is required to prove the integrity of the electrical apparatus prior to energisation by the distribution or transmission system. There are numerous levels of authorised electrical operators each with specific authorizations and competencies. An overhead line worker maintains the 22,000 volt AC transmission system and the 1500 volt DC traction system that supplies power to our trains. Overhead line workers generally work from elevated work platforms and occasionally ladders. A substation electrician maintains the electrical equipment installed in the network of traction supply substations and the underground cable network that forms part of the AC transmission system. A signal high voltage electrician maintains the multiple high voltage signal power distribution systems that transmit the power that operates the signalling and control systems of the railway. An authorised high voltage tester 
performs quality assurance functions to ensure the electrical apparatus of the network are safe to energize after installation and to ensure electrical protection systems function correctly. A responsible engineer manages changes to the configuration of the electrical network to support planned outages and rail operations. They undertake fault investigation and reporting and are responsible for determining requirements for pre-commissioning testing and energization of new or modified electrical apparatus. A request application for switching or isolations of an electrical asset must be submitted at least 10 days prior to works being undertaken. MTM's high voltage switching planners assess each access authority request and prepare a switching schedule detailing the isolations and earthing or short circuiting required to provide safe access to the apparatus. The switching schedule is then checked by an independent high voltage switching planner or high voltage electrical operator with appropriate system competency and submitted to the electrical control centre. This must occur at least three days prior to the planned switching. A responsible officer in Electrol checks and confirms that the appropriate actions are detailed on the switching schedule prior to the switching being undertaken. All infield switching, isolation and earthing or short circuiting is managed via Electrol and undertaken by an authorised electrical operator. Electrol confirms that the authorised electrical operator has the correct switching schedule and agrees to approve any additional protections that the work party may request, such as additional site earths or short circuits. During communications, all actions are confirmed and repeated by both parties to ensure complete understanding for safety assurance. The Electrol Officer undertakes remote switching of the AC and DC circuit breakers as appropriate and authorises in-field switching. Upon confirmation that all switching tasks as per the schedule have been completed, they give permission to test and apply earths or short circuits to the apparatus. Upon completing the testing and applications of earths or short circuits, the authorised electrical operator confirms this to Electrol and requests permission to issue the access authority. The Electrol officer grants permission. The authorised electrical operator shows the recipient in charge the precautions taken and the nearest live apparatus asking the following questions. Do you understand the apparatus covered and the limits of the access permit? Are you satisfied with the precautions taken? Are you aware of the nearest live apparatus and satisfied you can remain clear of it? Do you have any questions? The authorised electrical operator also asks a random question to test their understanding relating to the limits of the permit, precautions in place or any local risks. The recipient in charge manages all work on or near the electrical apparatus, remains on site for the duration of the permit and is responsible for ensuring the conditions of safe access do not change. They instruct all persons who need to sign on to the access permit in the hazards associated with the work, asking the following questions. Do you understand the permitted approach to the electrical apparatus and work to be undertaken? Who is responsible for supervising your work and do you agree to their continuous supervision? Are you aware of the nearest live apparatus and satisfied you can remain clear of it? Do you have any questions? The recipient in charge also asks a random question to test understanding relating to the limits of the permit, precautions in place, or any local risks. To receive the permit, recipients must give a positive response to each question. Switching schedules, important reminders. All planned high voltage operations must be conducted in accordance with a switching schedule. The switching schedule must be prepared and issued in accordance with Metro's processes to ensure they can be checked and verified by an independent high voltage operator prior to work commencing. The switching schedule must be complied with by all parties, including all field employees and electrol operators, whilst the high voltage operating is being conducted. Failure to follow any of the above may cause an electrical incident, injury or death. Upon completion of the works, the recipient in charge relinquishes the access authority to an authorised electrical operator who cancels the permit and advises Electrol. From this point, 
All access must be in accordance with the safe approach distance applicable to the authorisation level of the individual. Upon confirmation of the cancelled permit, Electrol may or may not authorise the removal of earths or short circuits placed as a precaution to allow permit issue. If the earths or short circuits are still being used as a precaution on another access authority, Electrol will not permit their removal. This process is managed through the Electrol control room. When earths or short circuits are no longer required, Electrol will arrange for their removal. The removal and restoration activities are all managed by a switching schedule in the same way the isolation activities are. With Electrol's confirmation and permission, the authorised electrical operator removes the earth or short circuit as directed and confirms completion with Electrol. Upon confirmation of the completion of these tasks in accordance with the switching schedule, Electrol arranges for the closure of AC and DC circuit breakers remotely as required. Procedures, important reminders. These procedures exist to keep Metro's employees, contractors, passengers, and the general public safe. Metro's procedures must be strictly adhered to at all times when working near or around high voltage assets, including application process, planning phase, high voltage operating activities, access authority issue and cancellation, re-energisation of circuits following isolation. Failure to comply with these requirements may result in an electrical incident, injury or death. Metro Trains is a complex electrical installation where there are procedures and processes that govern access to the network assets. Where there are requirements to access the high voltage electrical assets, these processes and procedures must be complied with. We hope this video has provided you with a greater understanding of the MTM traction system and how it works to ensure your ongoing safety.